Howdy. You're so much taller. <laughs> <laughs> you say that louder again. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs>
Anthony Grass? Yes. Carl Kinski? Yes. Justin Donovan? Yes. Gina Bryant? Abstain. Christy Cleghorn? Yes. Motion carries. Five, <coughs> one, two. Just, just, thank you, guys. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you, ladies. Discussion of zoning ordinance section 405-1409 conforming uses. Okay, so uh, I'd say about two and a half weeks ago I sent you some information on a few ordinance changes. Over the past year we've discussed some of these, uh, whether it be with the Board of Aldermen or this body. Um, so taking those discussions, some citizen input and some research into consideration I want to suggest a few uh, ordinance updates. So regarding the non-conforming status of mobile homes and, and non-mobile home zones and the abilities of owners to replace those units with a special use permit, it's been discussed that updating the ordinance uh, to make certain replacements, uh, to make certain replacements uh, our more recently manufactured mobile home would be safer and more secure for our citizens and, and it certainly uh, would be. Uh, I won't go into um, all the research, but uh, life expectancy on mobile homes, trailers built today is about 30 to 55 years, according to the uh, HUD. Uh, it was about half that when they were manufactured in the uh, 60s, 70s, and early 80s, um, particularly prior to uh, pre-HUD, HUD getting into the uh, trailer manufacturing regulation business. Um, so. Based on that, uh, you know, those, those, a lot of those older trailers have a very short shelf life. They were made with uh, lesser quality materials, small, tiny dimensional lumber. Uh, I could go into a few other details, but um, they're just not safe and meant to last that long. Um, and as regulations and, and manufacturing codes improve, um, they're even better now than they were in 1990 or 2000. And so the current code says, you know, that you can replace a mobile home with a newer or improved model mobile home. Uh, so if the mobile home that's sitting there now was manufactured in 1970, you could replace it with one that was manufactured in 1971, um, which really isn't what the city is looking for in terms of safety and security of the people who are living there and in terms of fire safety and other things. Uh, so my suggestion is to replace that phrase with you would uh, the replacement of a mobile home with a mobile home manufactured no more than 10 years prior to application for replacement. So in other words, if someone came uh, to apply for a uh, special use permit because their trailer was non-conforming, meaning it was sitting in a non-mobile home zone, they would have to replace it with one that is no more than 10 years older than the date of their application for replacement. So would that still include, uh, include the verbiage of improved? Because, I mean, you could get one that's less than 10 years old and then not be improved. We could certainly put that in there. Um, I certainly hope it would be improved, but yeah. we can add that verbiage. And how would you... How would you um, how would you define improved? I think that kind of leaves it a little more open to the judgment of us and the board of aldermen, which might be a good thing. I mean, there's certainly some subjectivity there. Um, exactly. These, I mean, regardless, uh, it's going to have to pass occupancy and all of those kind of things. They all do, and then I don't know if you remember. We added some stipulations to the older mobile homes here not too long ago, uh, and some of those are having trouble passing that, and um, I don't want to say rightfully so, but understandably so. Right. Um, I'm just curious, do you think that there's any chance that this might be counterproductive? I mean, let's say a guy's got a mobile home there that was built in 1970, and he wants to replace it with a mobile home that was built in 1995. That's probably an improvement over the 1970 mobile home, but it's not going to be in compliance, and you might not be able to afford a mobile home that was made in 2011 or subsequent. So I'm just, and I am no expert on the mobile home market or on how 
people replace mobile homes. So I'm really just sure. asking out of curiosity. It seems to me there is a potential that this could discourage some replacements that would be improvements. And I, I'm just wondering what, what your thoughts are, if you have any thoughts on that. I mean, that's a definite possibility. We could add, you know, or improve, but there is some very strong subjectivity there. I, I'm assuming that improved would be in the eyes of the community development administrator or planning and zoning administrator to put that in the staff report. Um, keep in mind these are very specific situations. So this would not be the replacement of a mobile home in a mobile home park. It would be the replacement of a mobile home in a non-conforming situation, which there are quite a few sitting around town there's the, the the mobile home park out along 61 is zoned mobile homes uh, the mobile home park off of st mary's road is zoned mobile homes um, uh, the one off of 10th street is not and then there are various other small you know two or three mobile homes on a lot around the city those are all non-conforming so they would fall under this it would not include the bigger ones that i mentioned what, what would be the downside of adding or improved. I mean, are you concerned that if somebody wants to replace it with a 1995 mobile home, we're not saying newer mm -hmm. than the existing one, we're just saying improved. Are you concerned that the property owner might say, well, it's improved because the sink's not dirty? Or yeah, it's very or subjective. Or, and, if you, and if you look at the life expectancy of trailers, if someone is wanting to put a 1995 trailer, as of today, that's already 26 years old. So that's already half of the life expectancy. Right, as a 2010 of a new trailer. trailer is more than 10 years old. Yeah. So. Okay. So I mean, a, a 2010 trailer would be better than a lot of the trailers that are out there. It would be. And that number of years can be expanded. Um, that was what I went with based on what we talked about with life expectancy. So if there's a 10-year-old mobile home uh, and the life expectancy is 50 years, um, I just like to get them in before they reach half of their life expectancy. But that could easily be expanded. And if you look at the trend of trailer parks and how these non-conforming trailer parks are doing business, they are signing lease to own with the renter, so then they are not fixing maintenance. They are not replacing anything, they are not fixing anything. It is up to the renter to maintain maintenance. So if we're allowing them to put in older trailers, then that is putting the burden onto the renter. So are you against adding the improved language and just keeping up with the 10-year yeah. language? So yes. there's something, yeah. I'm just trying to yeah. Yeah. So I guess what you're saying, Carl, is you're worried that if we put, you know, 10 years or newer, what it could incentivize somebody to do is just to keep fixing up one that's well past its life expectancy. Yeah, that, that's the concern that I've got, but I don't want to pretend that I'm against it. I'm just trying to balance it all. And yeah. to be perfectly frank, I'll probably go along with what the majority is thinking. It just dawned on me that somebody who wants to replace their home with a one that was made in 2010, mm -hmm. you know, uh, wouldn't, uh, and if they had a real cruddy looking home now, I think I'd rather have a 2010 home, even though it's outside the age. And I understand we can tinker with the ages, and I don't have any magic age mm -hmm. to, to say. Is there, is there some t time where all of these new provisions on making these mobile homes less prone to fire went into effect? Is, is there I mean, it gets better and better as the years go on. Definitely post-1977, they were safer, but you know, they've also had some very good improvements since 1990. Um, like I said, the, the only reason I went with the 10 years is that, that 30 to 55 year shelf life, for lack of a better term. So if it's already 10 years, we're already approaching half the age of the mobile home. But I mean, you're absolutely right. I would add that I've had zero applications for mobile home installation over the past three years. 
so. Installation or what are you talking about? This year? No one has applied to install a mobile home. We have issued a special use permit, oh, 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 but I still have not received the mobile home installation oh. application, which is required of that individual. Oh, I see. I mean, the kind of the theme with a lot of the ordinances in regards to mobile home is to phase them out, more or less. Make them safer, for right. sure. Mm -hmm. More appealing, too. Yeah. No, I agree with the is 10 years. Is there some years. kind of verbiage you can put in there, like, um, that... David can say. <laughs> <laughs> well, they can always apply for a, 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 a variance or whatever, can't they? Um, can't they? Variance is only for certain issues. Uh, since this is a zoning ordinance, it, perhaps, yes. There's a variance process uh, where you can apply if you think uh, a zoning ordinance is being applied to we're following it to the guideline, which we should, but that this makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Um, like a setback. You know, I'm only going to be 24 foot off instead of 25. Um, there's a variance process mm -hmm. to go through to yeah. allow that yeah. to happen. Or I own it on my property, you know. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then when you're talking about replacing it with a mobile home manufactured not more than 10 years ago, I'm assuming that some mobile homes manufactured 10 years ago are in terrible condition and some mobile homes manufactured 10 years ago are in so much close to pristine condition. So much depends on maintenance of these mobile homes. I mean, just like your home, um, you know, your, your stick made home uh, poured on a sla concrete slab, you still have to do a lot of maintenance. These things require more maintenance and um, Typically, are, are uh, owned by either landlords um, whose top priority isn't maintenance, um, or individual owners who you know bought a mobile home for a reason and don't have lots of money to pour into maintenance. Um, so it's difficult. I mean, they also supply low-income housing for many people, mm -hmm. and I don't wish to see them all go away, I just wish to see them be safer. Do you know a number of mobile homes that are out there that, that would be non-conforming that aren't rental property? So how many mobile home, how many non-conforming mobile homes aren't rental property? Mm -hmm. See, I know a one. I know, that's, I know that's a one, and a, it's the most immaculately kept trailer I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> On the corner of Ninth and uh, yes. yeah. mm -hmm. uh, Maple. Two. Yeah. Yeah. There's one out on 61 that I believe is owner occupied. Might be a renter. I'm gonna. I, this is a by far a guess. I'm gonna say five or under, out of probably 50 to 100. That is a that is a gift. Mm -hmm. Most of them are rentals. Um, there's rentals down here on Seraphim. There's rentals mm -hmm. on Washington. There's rentals on uh, Triangle. Um, all the ones down at uh, Ten mm -hmm. or Chadwell, Gabri, whatever. Um, They're leased down. Uh, well, so so we got. Two or three options here. We could say keep it manufactured not more than 10 years. We could say improved or manufactured not more than 10 years. And the third option is we could say improved and manufactured not more than 10 years. So that we're not dealing with somebody replacing it with a cruddier trailer mm -hmm. that is within the 10 year window. So when someone puts forth an application that says, here's the trailer that they have to bring you the trailer that they want, how does that work? Yes, I mean, currently there's just a mobile home installation um, application. Basically, it's a permit not to build a house, but to, to bring a trailer or a mobile home. Okay. And yeah, they would have to uh, let us know the manufacturer, the date. And that would hold with this, too. They'd have to supply a, 
title or deed, it's probably a title because this is personal property until it's put on a permanent foundation. Any suggestions? Well, I would suggest improved and not the Yeah, I agree. So that we don't have yeah. Do you like the 10 years? I have no expertise in 10 years versus 12 versus yeah, I, I think that's, 10. I think that's a reason. Zero after it, so it just makes more sense to me. I feel like that's a reasonable. And you said and, Carl? That's what I'm thinking, so that if somebody's moving in, uh, yeah, not more than 10 years. Right, I'm right. I mean, something that was, you know, I can imagine plenty of cruddy-looking nine-year-old. I can imagine cruddy looking anything. Uh, well, that's true. Cruddy <laughs> looking mansion. At your, uh, at your seats, I also gave you some possible motions to use. Um, and if somebody wants to, um, you know, the Carl's suggestion is you would change the term newer or improved model mobile home to mobile home improved and manufactured no more than 10 years prior to application for replacement, correct? Yes, I mean, referring to the second set ordinance, you've got the language mobile home or trailer. I don't know why you use that in one and not in the other, but there might be a reason. There is, um, only because that is how it currently exists in code. Okay. It can be changed. Uh, so the special use regulation, the current term is uh, new or improved model mobile home or trailer. In non-conforming, it's new or improved model mobile home. But if we're thinking, I think we should be consistent. So it's either it should be, is there a difference between a mobile home and trailer that you're envisioning? Uh, they're both defined. So uh, I think typically a trailer, you know, if you were to look it up, is con considered pre-HUD. So those pre-1977 and mobile home is considered post HUD, but they're basically the same thing. Okay, well I just think we should be consistent yep. so that nobody looks at it. So you're making the suggestion that we would change new or improved model mobile home under non-conforming uses to mo mobile home or trailer. I actually think if, if trailer in people's minds refers to pre-HUD, just take it out. Say take out trailer. So mobile home improved or manufactured no more, or sorry, and improved and manufactured no more than 10 years prior to application for replacement. Yes, sir. And I'm just making sure I got that straight. There's that's no motion I'm, on the table yet. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. I mean, if you want, I'll make it a motion. Okay. So you are making a motion to change the term under section 405.140G from newer or improved model mobile home to mobile home improved and manufactured no more than 10 years prior to application for replacement. To change it to improved mobile home manufactured not more than 10 years. I think, I think you did. Did you say improved? Yeah. I did, yeah, I, I had it afterward. I'm sorry. That's okay. Improved mobile home. Manufactured no more than 10 years prior to the application. Should we maybe table that until we can clarify the verbiage? You know, maybe just come back with a, with a new suggestion for a motion? I mean, Carl can make his motion as... Yeah, I mean, you can make your motion every other But I, we can change whatever verbiage we need to and then I'll have it typed up and sent to the board. Well, yeah, I think just I'll adding the, we're just adding the word improved on this so mm -hmm. it's not really a complicated thing that it's susceptible to. So change newer on. or improved model mobile home to improved mobile home manufactured no more than 10 years prior to application for replacement. Yes, yeah, that's, that's, your that's motion. the motion that I'm making. Okay. I'll second that. I have a motion to do the roll call of this to yay or nay. I can, yay or nay is fine with me. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. So, this special use regulation, I'm sorry, Gary, that's where we're at next. I kind of jumped the gun there. 
Would you like me to move on to that one? Sure. <laughs> no. The special use regulation is basically the same type change. Uh, mobile homes replacement is mentioned in two sections, non-conforming and special use regulation. So we can strike or trailer, add improved, and it would change 405-200-D22 to from new or improved model mobile home or trailer to improved mobile home manufactured no more than 10 years prior to application for replacement. Do you need a motion for that? I make a motion for that. I'll second. We got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. okay. I will send those changes on to the Board of Aldermen. Discussion of Zoning Ordinance Section 405.205 Sign Regulation. Okay, so regard, with regards to the sign ordinance, um, a few things. With few exceptions, we cannot uh, restrict content on signs. So there's, there's um, you know, basically a rule out there that if a, you know, a code enforcer walks up and has to read the sign to determine if it's illegal, it's already you're already wrong. Um, with few exceptions, right? So we definitely can, uh, if, if there's nudity or pornography, things of that nature, we can ob obviously uh, regulate and control that. We have some stipulations on content in our code that I'd like to clean up a little bit. Um, that, in conjunction with, I've received some complaints over the past six months. Uh, you know, any content related complaint, I always let that person know that we can't control content, okay? That's kind of the purpose of the First Amendment. People can say things that you don't like to hear. Um, however, we can control time, place, and manner, and several of those complaints were about the number of signs. Um, temporary signs is what we're talking about here. Um, and our temporary sign definition isn't um, terribly clear, so I'd like to clean that up also. Uh, our code also, our sign code currently does not exempt temporary signs from needing a permit. We don't issue permits for temporary signs. Uh, most cities don't, but currently it's not exempted. The only thing exempted is a real estate sign uh, and a yard sale or garage sale sign, uh, which again, those are content, those are subject matter. Um, what I'd like to do is define what a temporary sign is, then clean up, the add, add the temporary sign permit, I'm sorry, temporary sign to the exceptions of needing a permit with some stipulations. But those are, um, those are separate issues. So the first thing would be, again, throw those questions at me when you have them, would be to um, change the existing definition um, of a temporary sign to a sign constructed of non-permanent material, including but not limited to vinyl, cardboard, quarter plastic, plastic, sheet metal, or wood, and placed either on the ground, on a pole, without a footing to support such pole, or to a building with such materials as rope, string, tacks, or screws, and not enclosed in some form of permanent cabinet or structure. That's the first hurdle. You need a motion for that? Questions? <laughs> yeah, I, I just I just have a couple of questions yes. and observations. I mean, I think it's important that we. I like the fact that the new uh, ordinances stop talking about political mm -hmm. signs and just talk about signs generally, because I think that increases the chances that it would survive a constitutional challenge. And. You know, there was a case up in Ladu where they used the phrase political signs and, you know, who knows, but mm -hmm. if I have a sign up that says, love your neighbor, somebody could take that as a political sign. But I'm still concerned, are you planning on running this by uh, Mark Bishop or some attorney or something? Okay. Absolutely. It, in because this is, this is a real minefield and the... the the problem, you know, because it's not entirely clear 
you know, if you make it so broad that it includes not only political signs, but also a sign that says love your neighbor or whatever, you know, maybe you're making it more likely to be constitutional, but I really think we need to have some lawyer who knows First Amendment law look at this, because, you know, you've got loads of cases and they all seem to come out of Missouri and from and the, the big case is City of Ladue versus whatever, yeah. which, you know, where they had an ordinance, and I'm sure Ladue can afford to defend the case in a court more than we can. I think a temporary sign with these materials is also, for the time allowed to have them out, is for the wear and tear of the sign. So if it's out longer than that, then it's going to kind of start looking bad. Right. You know, so I see. I think that it's a good point to put a limit on how long they can be out there. You know, and if you want to, if you want it out there longer, then put a footing, put it in a permanent cabinet. Uh, you know, so that way it's a permanent. You're going to spend some money if you want to. Get a sign it. permit first. Yes, that too. <laughs> get a permit. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're not. I mean. Are we discussing, though, the possibilities of a time limit? And that's not, is that in your proposal? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, just FYI, Mark, our, our, the city attorney reviews all ordinances before they're adopted. He has reviewed the non-conforming and special use, though we changed some of the verbiage this evening, so he'll go over that again. And uh, I'll have him go over this um, before it goes to the Board of Aldermen. He absolutely reviews any ordinances we would adopt. Um, also, I've supplied to you in your email uh, about two and a half weeks ago some examples from other cities. Uh, one was a very large city, Springfield, Missouri, where the stipulations on temporary signs are long and very winded, um, and that's okay. And then I gave you three kind of smaller cities, including two locals, Perryville and Farmington. Uh, each of them have go about it in a different way, but they do tackle temporary signs um, with some limits. Again, I just want to be clear, no limits on subject matter, okay? You can put whatever you want on your sign with some very, um, uh, very few exceptions. However, so this, this would not disallow people to put political signs in their yard. It would not disallow people to put, you know, welcome new St. Jen Dragon, welcome new Valley Warrior. It would not disallow people to put yard sale signs and, and auction signs and real estate signs. Um, you could still do all those things. You can put, um, you know, uh, City of Ozora bingo signs and all that stuff is still allowed. Um, what we were do hopeful, what we can hopefully do tonight is redefine temporary signs so it's not subject content related. So a guy has, a guy puts up his candidate sign, well, let's, you know, you still see Trump signs, Trump 2020 signs all over. Uh -huh. and they've been up longer than 60 days. Uh -huh. And is that going to be a violation? I mean, are we going to go to It wouldn't be subject related. So it would no, it not be related to the president. Okay. Or no, I understand. It would be related to the amount wouldn't. of time the sign was there. So basically. So, so it would be. I mean. It could be. It, it, it could be. I gave several suggestions. One would limit it to 60 days um, for once, or, you know, a sign or 120 days across a year. Uh, that would take some policing, for lack of a better term, that we don't have the staff to do. However, I would add that we could put a, a sticker on a sign that says, you know, this date, your 60 days started clicking. Now, does that prevent someone from taking that sign up, waiting two right. days and putting another sign down? No. Right. So, thus, you have other things to think about. Could and you they just... Can, they can do that, but they can do that on a lot of statutes right now. Correct. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you could also your, limit... You can't let your dog run outside for under state law for more than 12 hours, 12, so you let get your dog in at 11 hours. <laughs> they can't, so the statute's somewhat difficult to enforce. 
Well, you can, can also limit putting a sticker on a sign. Yeah. yeah you can also change. limit the square footage. That was the other uh, suggestion. So, and if, if you looked at the mm -hmm. samples in Farmington, Perryville, and other small cities, that's usually the route they go. So, uh, I think in one of the suggestions I gave you, um, it was. I think 32? 19. Was it 19? 19 and 64 feet. on the commercial, I believe. So if you think about a standard yard sign, they're usually uh, 18, by 18 by 24, which is three square foot. Mm -hmm. So if you had a limit in residential areas of 18 square foot, you could have six yard signs, two-sided, and still be fine. Uh, and then we went to 32 in non-residential zones. So commercial uh, could have 32 square foot, so double that. Uh, um, also within that 18 square foot, you could have a four by four banner at 16 square foot. You could have a three by five banner. And we do see banners in yards sometimes advertising local fundraisers. That All that would be fine still. Can we, can we limit school board running? Absolutely. Especially yellow and black signs. <laughs> well, I think these are improvements over the, the current. Yes, just having Cleans some kind of guidelines. Yeah. It does clean it up and that, that was my initial, actually I started thinking about this probably six months ago, um, was to clean it up because it, it has some subject matter in it. Uh, but since then we've gotten complaints on the number of signs. Um, and it's not a whole lot of complaints, and those those complaints that occurred, those properties have cleaned their property up of the signs um, without you know having to enforce any rules. Mm -hmm. But perhaps something like this would not allow for that to happen in the future. Did you have a comment? To that point. Go ahead. Yeah. Everybody's ready. I don't know if I'm swaying my opinion. <laughs> I came to see Jim twelve years ago, uh, supervisor of operations for Saber Liner. And then uh, my injuries from uh, the Middle East, I had to quit my job, had both my knees replaced and hand surgeries. And anyway, um, I stand for my country and a lot of what we do. I'm retired military. And what appalls me is we have to argue, and I'm not calling out any candidates, I'm not calling any political affiliations. What I'm saying is certain things look offensive to people. If your candidate loses, you know, you might be upset, but you know, get over it like anything else. Uh, if your candidate wins, yay, hurrah, whatever. But in the same token, we're trying to keep St. Jennifer beautiful. We're trying to keep things clean. We're trying to keep things honest. The thing is, flags, posters, anything that's up longer, in my opinion, than a week past the election, the election's already been called, it should be taken down, no matter who it is. I mean, I get people are irate. I mean, you get people that are so extreme. Well, look what happened to our U.S. Capitol. And to me, that's extremism. And all you're doing is promoting anarchy in our country. So in my opinion, St. Jen, I've always thought it would be a peaceful nation. This is a peaceful county. I've always liked the city. I come, like my wife, she was born in Stoptown. Uh, I come from a small community, farming community. Not here, but. And the thing is, I mean, everybody knew of everybody. I mean, you, at one time, the old, the old joke used to be, you could tell somebody something that went into St. Jim, by the time you dropped in your car and drove to the other end, they already knew about it. <laughs> For sure. But the thing is, you know, I get signs. I get that, okay, you're gonna do a fundraiser. You're gonna do something to cheer on your team at the high school. I mean, I get that, and that's, that's cool. That, that's great, mm -hmm. but if you're running for some kind of political agenda, Yes, people put your signs up, that's fine. If you want to do it, put them up three months before the election, I don't care. 
when the election's over, take them down. There's no reason for them to be there. You've either won or you've lost. You might get pissed off, you might say hooray. But either way, it just detracts away from our city, in my opinion. So, if you wanted my opinion on it, and I don't have any bearing on how you guys vote or what you do, I would say after the election's been called, no matter what it is, I would give them a time limit. And if they don't take it down after the second warning, then you fine them, period. And build revenue for the city. So they'll do one of two things. They'll either comply or they'll pay a fine. Because my signs are always down. In fact, in the last election, two of my signs were stolen out of my yard. <laughs> because they didn't like who I was rooting for. But it doesn't matter who I rooted for. No matter, it doesn't matter who you rooted for. Not everybody's going to agree. And that just ma makes us part of America and what we are as a melting pot. I mean, we're not the saviors of the world. My thing is, fix your own backyard first. So, and like I said, in my opinion, I'd give them a time limit. Mm -hmm. and if they don't agree, fine them. They don't want to pay it, throw them in jail. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Yeah. See you later. Yeah. See, you, see you on election day. <laughs> <laughs> it's Tuesday. Tuesday. For school board. <laughs> <She ain't it. laughs> All right. Other questions? I think that, you know, his point with adding the, the time limit, like two or three months, would put a, put a stop to that, you know. I agree, and it's not political. I mean, but if we said take it the sign oh, down yeah. two weeks after the no, election, no, no, no. Yeah, you can't I, I think we're going to be, but chances we're gonna are be gonna, soon and Lord yes. Bishop's going to say, I told you so. Yes, yes. Well, let's, use, let's use Trump, for example. Right? Well, I'm going either way. Are, those are the people are going to say, he can run again. Okay, so. Yes. Right. Yes. I, mean, so I, I, yeah. I mean, you know, you see the ones that say, 2020. You know, yeah. 2016. Yeah, you it's can like have, David. You can leave, leave it up for David can leave his signs up and say, "I'm going to run again in four years, so yeah. I'm just going to leave them up." Right. Yeah. I mean, you know. Agree, yeah. right? No. <laughs> so let's circle back around. <laughs> um, changing the subject. You don't want to talk about Trump? <laughs> to do you want to uh, change the definition? Yes, I think your definition's yeah. much okay. clearer. Yeah. Um, are you good with uh, the one that I've written here? It basically means it's non-permanent and it's on a non-permanent material. Correct. Yes. Yeah. But it's much more explanatory than that. Um, so if we want to change it to that or suggest to the board changing it to that definition, I just need a motion. I need a motion. And you're good with uh, yeah. so 405-205-B37 changing it to the definition that I typed up here. Okay. All that. And Christy, you were the second? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion clear. Okay. The second point would be to just add the word temporary to the definition of a banner. A banner is a temporary sign. <coughs> we just add the word temporary to the existing definition, it will then fall under you know, the other uh, stipulations associated with temporary signs. So if this commission and the Board of Aldermen chooses to limit the amount of square footage or the amount of time for a temporary sign, banners then fall under that. I'll make a motion to accept as presented. Adding temporary to 405-205-B5? Correct. I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Uh, the third uh, topic is to then 405-I1-G currently lists an exemption of temporary real estate signs. Again, so now we're getting into subject matter. It's a real estate sign. 
So it would change that to one of several suggestions. The first suggestion I made, it would change that exemption. So this would exempt these signs from having to get a permit. And it would read temporary signs. Display of these signs shall be limited to no more than 18 square feet in gross surface area in residential zones and 64 square feet in gross surface area in all other zones. These signs shall not be displayed in excess of 60 consecutive days, no more than, nor more than 120 days total in a calendar year. So this would limit the square footage and the amount of time. Is that just in an R1 and an R2? A residential zone would be um, any R zone and a mobile home zone. Mobile, oh, okay. So you would have, a, we have industrial and commercial zones um, where... Would be the 64. Correct. Feet. And, and um, again, all this will have to run by mark before it could be adopted into ordinance. I just want to clarify that. But if you read through, you know, some of the other ordinances, these are very close to those. Yeah. And some of the other suggestions were you can take away the time allotment and just go with the square footage. So you could limit it to just 18 square foot or 16 square foot or whatever that number is in residential, 64 in non-residential um, without any limits on time. Um, there are cities out there that limit the amount of signs to a number of signs per property, so six per property, and they say you can't have them any taller than the building or any taller than five foot from the ground. You could just re you could just exempt temporary signs, but that then gives no restrictions. Um, and then the last one there is is fairly subjective. It does not limit square footage. It does not limit the amount of time. It just exempts temporary signs and says display of these signs shall not require a permit when said installation is not unreasonably injurious, dangerous, unsafe, or offensive to the public. And honestly, I would take out offensive to the public because I, there are going to be people who are offended, right. by, whether it be political or the color of the sign or the shape of the sign. Or who has the sign. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But the, 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 two, the first two suggestions, which involve square footage and time, definitely give some, some stronger parameters to our citizens that say, you know, and I think a lot of citizens don't want to say anything because they don't want to upset their neighbor. That's and good. that's understandable. And I mean, I think you're, the square footage and the time is good. You've got then one version that is just square footage and doesn't include time. And then change three deals with the height of the sign. And it seems to me that the best <coughs> alternative that I'm thinking would be <coughs> one, which is square footage and time coupled with the height of the sign because and you don't have that as one of the options mm -hmm. right because the hot having the, the thought of a sign that is more than five feet above the, the, ground, the ground yeah you know that's got traffic consequences and other, and it's also more ugly right. um so i'm thinking that you might want to integrate one and three three Mm -hmm. And and I, I, the the change four seems to me to not be, be kind of pointless. Why are we defining temporary signs if we're exempting them from everything? I, I gave you all options. <laughs> well, so I mean, I would, I would, to me, it's one and three combined would be the best approach. The 18 square foot and the 64 square foot, if you look at the samples I gave you, the examples are, they're on the high end, so it still gives people ample opportunity right. to put a lot of sign. Right. In and I don't see why anybody would have their for sale sign size above. Feet. I know. I and the 16. 64 oh, okay. is more of a, like, a commercial for sale factory. Yeah, he's okay. like, you don't that building. Correct. Um, so is that, like, Whenever you're talking about the like 64 square feet, you know that's four by eight. Is that both sides, no, or is no, that just no, total? It's just one. It's just, yeah. One side. Somebody could build the sign four feet by 16 feet. You can do uh, yeah. eight by eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
but we're talking about you putting a height limit eight, also. And, be right. over five feet. and that would be above grade. So it couldn't be that you get a 10 foot pole and put your sign five foot up the pole and the sign's only five foot. We're talking, you know, if that's what you want to do, five or six foot above grade. So to the top of the sign. To the top of the sign. 64 yeah. feet seems excessive. 64 square feet. But that's only for commercial property. The 64 square feet? Yeah. 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 Commercial or industrial. Uh -huh. yeah. I think even in that city, it seems excessive. And if it's taller than five feet, probably if it falls over, it might be dangerous. Person Keep in yeah. mind, too, that there are still lots of stipulations that keep crazy things from happening. Like, you can't put these signs in a sight triangle. You can't put them to where they block public signs. You can't put them to where they inhibit traffic or sidewalk. Uh, you know, they're, they're, all those things still exist. They can't be unsafe, so it can't be a 64 square foot uh, commercial real estate sign that's falling over. That still violates existing ordinance. Sounds good. Well, I would propose, I mean, I know you're wanting to So something of the nature of a display of these signs shall be limited to no more than 18 square foot in gross surface area in residential zones and 64 square foot in gross surface area in all other zones and may not and of no greater height than five foot above the ground as measured from the ground to the top of the sign, period. These signs shall not be displayed in excess of 60 consecutive days nor any more than 120 days total in a calendar year or some it, it well you, you deleted the six, not more than six per property I, think when you did that. I read the square footage version of that versus yeah. the oh okay I'm sorry mm -hmm. you're right but <coughs> it can it, we can go from square footage to number of signs I think square footage okay. is what yeah. most of discussion. the most of the municipalities I looked at, that's that's the route they go. It, yeah, give, it gives you the flexibility. Right. Yeah. If you want a big banner, if you want a big four by four, if you want three eighteen by twenty fours, if you know. Want little one by one. <laughs> um, so, at this point, Carl's suggestion is you would change um, four hundred five two hundred five I one G to. G, temporary signs. Display of these signs shall be limited to no more than 18 square feet in gross surface area in residential zones and 64 square feet in gross surface area <coughs> in all other zones and of no greater height than five foot above the ground as measured from the ground to the top of the sign, period. These signs shall not be displayed in excess of 60 consecutive days nor any more than 120 days total in a calendar year. So always. <laughs> so on, on possible change three, you can attach the sign to the building or a facade, and it could be over five feet, as long as it's not taller than the facade or the wall. Do you want to eliminate that part? I What I include was just the five foot part. So right. if you wanted to put it on your house, Right. You'd still only be able to go five foot from the ground. I'm thinking more of commercial because if, if you want to put it on the side, of, if you got a, a yeah. huge warehouse and you want to put yeah. a sign, like a banner, right? Uh, yeah. If it can't be above five feet, you can't. Yeah. yeah so I think I think we should keep that. Allow it to be on. The so go ahead and include the rest of that number three there. Yeah. Okay. And I don't mean to belabor this, but. No, so that would mean display of these signs shall be limited to no more than 18 square feet in gross surface area in residential zones and 64 square feet in gross surface area in all other zones and of no greater height than five foot above the ground as measured from the ground to the top of the sign unless temporarily attached to a building but in no event taller than the facade of the wall upon which the sign is attached, period. These signs shall not be displayed in excess of 60 consecutive days, nor any more than 120 total days in a calendar year. Is there a way we can say that it can only be attached to the building taller than five foot if it's commercial? 
or industrial? I mean, you could you could add something. We could add that, but I don't think it would be necessary because I can't imagine anybody selling their residential property. Yeah, but, but, putting there's sign on the side on but there have been people putting signs on the sides of their houses. But they're still only in residential, they're only limited to 18 square feet. Correct. Right. Yes. So, but if they still want to take that that 18 by 24 sign and put it on the second story of their house, they still can. Well, I think they can, but I, I don't think they're, I mean, and I'm sure there's somewhere a lunatic in the out of the 350 million people in the United States who's doing that, probably to piss off their neighbor, but I don't think it's... Yes. Common, I don't think it's. Occurrence. I don't think it's likely. And <laughs> so yeah, with I, this, haven't, I haven't seen a sign like that in town. Even with, you know, all, all the people, all the strong political feelings. That people with have. with this <laughs> definition, you could still take a like a four by four, right, sixteen square foot, and you could put it if you wanted to attach it to your house. You could put it anywhere on your house, just not above the facade of the wall upon which it's on. So you can't. Attach yeah. it to the to the roof. Oh, was gonna, uh, that was my next thing. Could I attach it to the roof? <laughs> okay. All right. I, I, I'm in agreement with Carl. <laughs> Did you want to make a motion to that effect? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I have a motion. I'll six. And a second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Almost done. So. Once we design, define temporary signs within the code, we need to take the subject matter stuff out. So we just replaced real estate signs with temporary signs. Um, then there also is a stipulation for garage and yard sale signs, and I would just suggest deleting that altogether because now we have this guidance. Mm -hmm. I make a motion to approve. Second. And a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Last one. There's more? So, he, have you read the sign ordinance? Yes. I thought we were doing it. Is, it is long. I know. And it's not even as long as half of the I'm other. I'm going to put up a sign that says, keep the sign ordinance. <laughs> keep the meeting. You're going to put up a sign that says, keep the planning and zoning meeting short. Read the signs. Keep <laughs> Within our ordinance, <laughs> within our sign ordinance is this table of summary of permitted signs. So all I'm suggesting here, which is 405-205-F, make the necessary changes to the table summary of permitted signs in order to reflect the changes we've recommended tonight. Mm -hmm. Sure. Motion. <laughs> We have a motion. You did not email that. I did not see that. I did not email that. You are correct. Oh. I'm sorry. I have Carl's motion and Justin as a second. Sure. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. You are a tremendous bunch of folks for sitting through all that. This could be a motion to I got a motion. I got a motion. Who is the motion? Motion Tony. to adjourn. Anthony? Yep. Tony? Yep. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much.